Good afternoon learners. Welcome to NIOS. And today we will be covering chapter 18 in your syllabus that is Night of the Scorpion. The last theme that we discussed was the role of the father. So let me brush up that one more time for you. Well, the poet's father, he was a skeptic and a rationalist. Skeptic, like I have told you, somebody who doubts everything. And a rationalist is basically a very practical person. So the poet's father, a skeptic and rationalist, implemented his knowledge of science in that incident to alleviate the wife's pain. He tried every cause, every powder, every mixture, okay, to cure his wife's pain. At last, he was left with nothing. He poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a flash of matchstick to it. The flame feeding on the mother means that the flame is eating up his mother's toe, okay, his wife's toe. So, he had nothing left. All he could do was he put a paraffin and he put a matchstick to it. The poet dramatizes a contrast between the worlds of irish, irish, ir, irrationality and logic. There are two worlds. Irish, you know, irrationality when it comes to the villagers and logic when it comes to father. So, the poet is trying to picture both the sides of the world to you. Okay? Though the father was a very rational person, his decision to apply paraffin on the mother's toe was not. We can't, however, ignore his motivation in attempting to save his wife from suffering in that terrible position. The fourth theme that has been discussed in the poem is right. Right, you know, like if you remember, a holy man was called to the poet's house to tame the poison with an incantation. Incantation means chanting. It was their belief that this ritual could save her. They did not think the need of calling a physician. Instead, they called a holy man. So, but despite all these various attempts, nothing worked. The fifth theme and a very important theme of the poem is concern of the mother for her children. The reaction of the poet's mother just after the relief from the excruciating pain is noteworthy. The irony comes only with the last line when the poet's mother thanks God for making the scorpion pick her to sting rather than her children. The last line shows the sacrificial nature of the mother. What is the most sweet line in the poem? The most sweet line in the poem learners is the affectionate concern of a mother towards her children. It is a universally acknowledged fact that a mother is ready to suffer all types of pain and tortures with a smiling face, but she will not bear any pain imposed on her children. It is universally acknowledged that a mother can tolerate anything. She can endure any kind of suffering. But when it comes to her children, no, she will not handle anything. Concern for her children matters the most for her. Ezekiel here in the poem conveys a message of motherhood. From this line, we also come to know about the poet's mother's faith in God. The Night of the Scorpion is the story. Learners, let me just repeat it one more time. Well, the Night of the Scorpion is the story of one night in which the mother of the speaker is stung by a poisonous scorpion. She suffers for 20 odd hours while peasants, holy men and her husband attempts to heal her. They try curses, blessing, prayers, herbs and all forms of ancient medicine that are not practiced in most of the modern world. Their efforts are in vain. A sense of otherworldliness is created by the belief and practices of these peasants in comparison to the world in which the reader is existing. A barrier is putting up.
This barrier is torn down as the poem concludes and the reader realizes how similar they are to the character in the poem, united by their common humanity. Thus we see that the poem The Night of the Scorpion by Nisim Ezekiel is drenched in rural background, reflecting high rural superstitious beliefs and rituals. The poem in general appears to be a simple narrative of a tragic incident of a scorpion bite. But in-depth analysis of the poem reveals deeper meanings and themes that the poem operates upon. There are a number of themes and sub-themes that we have discussed. And, you know, the various themes that simultaneously operate within the poem, you know, the various themes are learners, yes, the first theme, superstitions, then the peasants and their conditions, you know, the villagers, their condition, motherly love, like we have discussed that this is the third theme and the helplessness shown by the father throughout the poem. Of these themes, motherly love is the most significant theme, okay? Motherly love is the most significant theme, but helplessness seems to be more prospering one throughout the poem. Okay, so one theme which has appeared to be the priority as compared to the other themes, that is the motherly love. So let's look at the themes of the poem in brief, okay learners, let's look at the themes in brief. The first theme, the attempts by the peasants to help to decrease the mother's pain, the actions of the same peasants to kill the scorpion, the reaction of the rational father, the various superstitions versus the scientific, okay. So basically the difference between rationality and superstitions, yes. The general undertones with regards to karma, like the villagers were constantly chanting that the pain, like, you know, the intensity of the pain will wash away the sins of the previous birth and will decrease the misfortunes of the next birth. So the religions, so the religious undertones with regards to karma and evil versus good. In the end, scorpion was defeated by the goodness of the mother. Look at these themes, learners. Look at these themes in detail. Come on, hurry up. We have discussed this before. But please look at these themes. Read it one, one time on your own. Okay. So now let's look at the structure of the poem. Well, the poem Night of the Scorpion has eight stanzas and it is written in free verse. Free verse means that there is no particular rhyme scheme in the poem. So understood? Free verse means there is no particular rhyme scheme. Throughout the poem, Ezekiel has used simple common language in exact place. Within the poem, he uses parallelism and antithesis. Not only that, he also uses the sound effect. And he has also included the traditional practices which also creates a new pattern for the poem. So basically now like we have done the analysis, we have done the themes, we have done the summary, we have discussed the poem in detail. Now let's look at the conclusion. Nisim Ezekiel's A Night of the Scorpion presents an Indian village in the 60s with its deep-rooted strains of superstition and blind faith. Nevertheless, the poem puts some light on the unity of Indian village people. Therefore, Night of the Scorpion is not only a poem of an incident in the life of the poet's mother, but also a poem of Indian belief and culture. And Nisim Ezekiel has succeeded in representing a rural Indian picture with clear imagery. Learners, what is superstition? Superstition is an important topic that is shown in the poem. His verse, his poem investigates certain aspects of the Indian life that are so frequently addressed and thought about out of date. Yet at the same time, they are all over. 
In Knight of the Scorpion, Ezekiel depicts a circumstance that is illustrative of the rusting Indian culture and draws out the commonness of such a circumstances. Learners, let's go through some literary devices in the text. So the first literary device is alliteration. What is alliteration? Alliteration is the term given to the repetition of the same sound or letter at the beginning of words in a phrase. For example, Peter picked a peck of pickled peppers. So, you know, the first letter of every word starts with P. Look at it, learners. So, this is an example of alliteration. Okay. And if you look in the poem, stung by a scorpion, parting with poison, Okay, these are all examples of alliteration. Next, antonyms learners. What are antonyms? An antonym is a word that means the opposite of another word. For example, what is the antonym of hot? It is cold. So, antonyms used in the poem, previous, the antonym of previous is next, antonym of evil is good, Antonym of skeptic is rationalist and antonym of curse is blessing. So, these are some important antonyms that have been used in the poem. The third, fig the the third literary device is simile. A simile learners is a type of figurative language that describes something by comparing it to something else with the words like or as. So, basically when you are comparing two things with words like like or as, it is an example of Simile. In the poem, like, like the villagers came like swarms of flies. So, like swarms of flies is an example of simile. The fourth literary device is metaphor. So, what is a metaphor? A word or phrase for one thing that is used to refer to another thing in order to show or suggest they are similar. So, metaphor in the poem is scorpion is the evil one. So, you know the comparison between the evil one and the scorpion. The next literary device is imagery. Poet communicates an experience and a very clear and vivid experience. The poet's communication is received by our senses. The senses consists of seeing, hearing, smelling, feeling and touching. The poet has to create an image to stimulate all of these senses. So, when all of these senses that are seeing, hearing, smelling, feeling and touching, when they all are stimulated, it becomes an imagery. Okay, so the, po so the poem is so clear. You know, you can imagine everything in the poem. So, it is also an example of imagery. Through visual imagery is most often used in poetry, an image may also represent a sound, a smell or feeling or sensation. In the poem, the poet has made use of various types of imageries. Image, look, look at the examples of imageries that are in the poem. For example, scorpions craw crawling beneath a sack of rice. Scorpion biting the mother. So, when, so, what is imagery? So, when you are reading the poem, these things are constant. You are imagining these things in your mind. Okay. And when you are imagining, it becomes imagery. Okay. You are creating that image in your mind. Okay. For example, father pouring paraffin on the tone. Toe, sorry. Okay. Peasants, you know, lot of peasants came like swarms of flies. They came chanting. So, these are all visual imagery. Now, learners, let us go through some important words and their meanings. Diabolic tail. What do you mean by diabolic tail? The stink of a scorpion which is devilish and wicked. So, basically a scorpion, he bites or he stings with his tail. So, that is why it is called as diabolic. Swarms means group. Paralyzed means making something immobile or killing something. Name of the God, the evil one. If you look at this line, well, we have discussed this. Please go through it. Go through the glossary on your own. Excellent. 
Incantation, I had discussed before, it means chanting. Paraffin means kerosene. Herbs means medicinal value. You know, a plant that has a lot of medicinal value. Doubting attitude of a rationalist, it is one of, you know, a theme in the poem. So basically, rationalist is basically a person who doubts everything and who only believes in reason and logic. Now, learners, let's go through some questions and answers. So, look at these questions. How was the mother bitten by the scorpion? How did the villagers come to the aid of the woman? How did the peasants view the stinging in the positive manner? What type of man was the father? How did he treat his wife? How did the mother respond after the recovery? Look at these questions, learners. Are you able to answer these questions now? Very good. Yes. So, how was the mother bitten by the scorpion? You know that. The poet and his family lived in a village. It was night time. There was constant rain for 10 hours. Due to rain, a scorpion entered the poet's house. It stung the poet's mother and crawled under a sack of rice. The poison was spreading through the body of the mother. The scorpion may have foreseen that the villagers will search for it and kill it. So it risked the rain again and escaped from the house. Okay, so how was the mother bitten? You know the answer. Learners, let's do one thing. Let's go through some MCQ type of questions. I think these questions will be easier for you. Now, if you look at the question, you just have to choose the correct answer. The child is afraid but admires. Very good. Yes, he admires the bravery of his mother. Second question. His father and the poet's father and the villagers panic and hastily suggest to... What are they suggesting learners? Now like we have discussed the poem, so now you can answer the questions. What are the villagers suggesting? Excellent! They are suggesting religious remedies to help. Third question. The poet seems to, seems to see the villagers as impractical and almost irritating which suggests that Excellent, which means the poet is critical of tradition. Okay, that is why he sees the villagers as impractical because he doesn't believe in old traditions and superstitions. Next question, learners. This is a dash poem as it tells a story. What kind of a poem it is, learners? We have discussed this also. Excellent, this is a Narrative poem because it tells a story. Next, using the first person giving gives the feeling that it is told from a. If you look at the if you look at the poem, it is written in the first person narrative. And if if it's written first person narrative, then what does it show? Yes, that it is told from a personal experience. Excellent learners. Sixth question. The scorpion picked on me and spared my children. What does this line depict? It's so beautifully written and articulated. What does this line depict, learners? Excellent. It shows the selfless and unconditional love of mother. Next, que next question, learners. Seventh. The poem does not have a rhyme scheme, which means the poem is a perfect example of a... If it doesn't have a rhyme scheme, what does it show? It is an example of, very good, it is an example of a free verse. Next, the poem is titled Night of the Scorpion for the major part of the poem is, for the major part of the poem, the scorpion is the victor. That is why it is not Night of the Mother, it is Night of the Scorpion because the major part of the poem covers the scorpion. Next, the peasant chant the name of the god to choose one correct answer, learners. 
very good to nullify the stinging experience. Very good learners. I hope this class has benefited you. Thank you learners for joining. We'll meet next time.